welcome back to Incredibly Useful Exercises for the Double Bass, where we condition specific aspects of our performance in short, stolen moments. Today, we'll explore the concept of power. We'll push our right shoulder to the limits, using the largest muscles to play the fastest notes as loud as you can. It sounds violent and crude, and it really is. It's the most unmusical exercise I know. Let's explore Power Sixteenths. I want to thank Joey Nager for his generous support of this series. Joey has been my go-to luthier for over five years. He sculpted my fingerboards buzz-free on both my 1850 English orchestra bass and my solo bass, making them so easy to play, and his tone work on my basses keeps them sounding full, free, and beautiful. Many professional working bassists throughout Texas rely on Joey for fixing and maintaining their treasured instruments. The Joey Nager prize-winning basses are also wonderful instruments. Please visit Joey's website listed below, and if you happen to be in the Houston area, pay him a visit to play his basses and to see how he can improve the playability and tone of your instrument. Power sixteenths are four minutes long, power and velocity are a five, endurance is a four, Control and mindfulness are two, and expression and coordination are zero. We play power sixteenths for quite a few reasons to understand the principle that playing fast is easy and playing loud is easy, but playing fast and loud is hard. For the strengthening and conditioning of the right shoulder and support muscles in the right hand, to develop the ability to play sixteenth notes at a high velocity and volume, for the exercise and conditioning of the adductor and abductor pollicis support muscles in the right thumb that are responsible for transferring natural arm weight into the upper half of the French bow, and to develop a strong grab in the right fingers. That saying about playing fast and loud is hard works like this. I can play fast notes, and it's easy as long as I play softly and use the wrist and elbow to play it. Small notes, small muscles. That's another saying I use a lot. I can also play loud notes, and it's fairly easy as long as I play slowly, because I'm using my shoulder and back to exert the force into the string. Big notes, big muscles. My volume goes up as I go slower, and it goes down as I go faster. It looks like this on a graph called the force velocity curve. The force-velocity curve is a relationship between force, velocity, and the resulting power output. It's mostly used by strength coaches in sports to focus and cycle various aspects, like strength, power, and speed, of a training program during a specific time period. It's an athletic formula, but I'm adapting it to music for the purpose of this explanation, so there are a lot of differences. In this case, the force refers to the natural weight of the arm, which through the strength of the support muscles in the thumb and hand, delivers weight into the string. We max this out by pulling our arm into the string from the back, not pressing down on it from the top. When we get to the upper half, the arm rotates outward just a bit, and the thumb muscles engage to transfer the weight all the way out to the tip. It's strenuous on the thumb, and that's why your thumb hurts when you do this. Conditioning is vital for the two main thumb muscles that we use for this. The velocity refers to the shortening of the shoulder, back, and pectoral muscles as we move the bow back and forth. The combination of the force of the arm weight and the velocity of the bow results in the power of the sound, a combination of loud volume and full tone. As we move faster, we can't deliver as much force or make the string go as fat, so the power output will naturally decrease. As we add force, we can't deliver as much velocity, which limits our power in a different way. This exercise tries to extend that curve, allowing us to play faster with more power for a longer duration. Generally, when I play fast, I use my elbow or the small muscles, small notes, small muscles. In power sixteenths, I'm forcing my shoulder to do something that it's not common. Small notes, big muscles. I'll hold it in a stressed position for 30 seconds at a time, rest for 15 seconds, and do it again four more times while increasing the tempo. 
30 seconds, by the way, is a completely arbitrary number. In our power output analysis, time is certainly a factor, just like force and velocity. I won't analyze it here, but I'll sum it up. If you want to build endurance, you play it longer. If you want to build burst power, you play it shorter. I chose 30 seconds because that's where I get the best results in my muscles. When you start doing this, it's perfectly fine if you stop after 15 or 20 seconds. Just listen to your body and grow the time as it works for you. But do keep the recovery at 15 seconds, not any more than that. We want to keep the resistance up. It would be perfect if we could just condition all aspects of our playing in one single exercise, but unfortunately it's not as easy as that. Sometimes we need to condition for power in short bursts. If we're preparing a recital, it helps to condition for endurance, velocity, and expression. If we're playing Bach, we need to practice for control. The needs of our conditioning change according to our assigned or chosen tasks. It's just a fact of life. So when would I use this exercise? Um, if I were training for an audition of some type, for orchestra or college, or something else which required short bursts of power. Of course, you can do it at any time. And if you do it a few times a week, you'll see some visible results, but it's mainly meant to develop results for orchestral playing. Do it how you feel and see where it takes you. In my experience, it will help you play loud, really loud. But as I tell people all the time, in any given opera, I only have to play loud about 10 to 15% of the time. The rest of it is simple accompanying, counting rests, playing fast quietly but highly spirited, or just doing punctuation. It's different in a symphony orchestra, but even so, playing loud is a relatively small part of the job. But it is important, and this exercise will give you a tiger in the tank when you need it. As with every exercise that's built on resistance training, listen to your body and don't play beyond a comfortable fatigue. So here's how we do it. We use progressive resistance to build the muscles before relaxing back to the original tempo. One set takes about three and a half minutes and you need a metronome and a timer or stopwatch. Play the first set at 130 for 30 seconds, rest for 15. Then at 140 for 30 seconds, rest for 15. 150 rest, 160 rest, and then go back to 130 for 30 seconds. As you get around 150 and 160, expect the power output to decay. That's normal. We play with a strong detache stroke deeply into the string. I vary the bow placement, frog middle tip, depending on how hard I want to work the thumb. If you really want to work your thumb support muscles, play it as loudly as you can at the tip of the bow. Before I play, I plan my recovery strategy because once I start, I don't let any mistake or fatigue stop me, just like in live performance. My priority here is to keep the tempo. If I start to fatigue, I'll play softer until my shoulder recovers. If I have a lot of slip tones, I'll add some rosin, daddy's little helper, until the tone is full again. Okay, I've got my clock and metronome. I've warmed up with some long tones and shoulder lifts. Do make sure to warm up your right shoulder before you play this. All right, here we go. Start the metronome at 1.30 and start the timer. Two, ready, go. Now up to 140, rest for 15, 5, 4, 3, 2, go. I try to keep my shoulders down the whole time. Now 
now up to 150. It is a good burn in my left arm while I do this. And I do need to make sure my shoulders stay loose. Two, go. Finally, 160. This is still a real challenge for me. It always has been. And now I'm just going to play a little softer because I don't need to run it. I'm going to go a little bit out more toward the middle, but still use my shoulder. Ready, go. That's right about the limit for me. And then up to 130 now. Remember, 160 is the fastest we ever have to play 16th notes in an orchestra. So I want to make sure I do it. One, here's back to 130. Ready, go. This feels much easier. That is power sixteenths. Please remember, this exercise is a musical anomaly. I don't use this technique to make music in the real world, except for maybe extreme extended techniques. It just doesn't fit, and it's not efficient or musical. It's just a great supplement for building primary and support muscles. I came up with this idea after watching Edgar Meyer play with Strength in Numbers at Austin City Limits. The video is still online. They played a tune called Blue Men of the Sahara, and it closes by Edgar playing the coolest 16th notes on a B. I played along with the recording and was humbled fast when I realized I couldn't keep up with Edgar playing a single note at mezzo forte, even just for one minute. Give it a try. The link's in the description. It's just a B. But Edgar keeps it up for three and a half minutes. For all of his technique and ability to get around the entire bass, he still knows when it's best to play just a single note and make it groove. See if you can keep up. It takes some good conditioning, so if you can, you're in great shape. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you find Power 16ths as useful for your performance as it has been for mine. I present this in the way that I've used and benefited from it. I don't intend to say that it's the only way to practice or approach power. Adapt these ideas to your style of curiosity, conditioning, playing, or teaching. Practice this and all exercises in the series in short, stolen moments, or incorporate them into your regular conditioning routine. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and leave any questions, comments, observations, success stories, or suggestions below. Please check out the incredibly useful exercises series of workout books, available in paperback and ebook on the Amazon site in your country. I look forward to you joining me next time. Thank you and be well, friends. <laughs>